God. And good. Oh, no, not fast enough. <laughs> Everyone has seen your shame behind the veil my of production value. My string fell down. I had to fix it. <laughs> Welcome to Delve Requisite, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday. We are back again with another episode of The Adventures of the Grimm's Folly. Uh, before we get into tonight's episode, let's take a quick couple of seconds here to thank some sponsors. Here at Proficiency Bonus, we are sponsored by two fantastic companies. One of them is Little Dragon Corp. You can type exclamation little dragon in the chat at any point during tonight's episode to get a link to their website. Uh, little Dragon Corp is a Canadian-based dice company that provides you with all of the shiny click-clack math rocks that your heart could desire. Uh, and you can acquire those click-clack math rocks at a slight discount if you use our code PROBONUS at checkout to get 10% off of your order. Uh, and until somebody tells me otherwise, I do think they are still running a special right now. Um, due to, as it has been explained to me, um, a tragic yet hilarious, uh, domino shelf style incident, uh, in which a, a whole bunch of things fell off of a shelf and then someone just, uh, like Kevin McAllister just was like, and now they're passing those savings on to you. <laughs> uh, so uh, they have a sale going on at Little Dragon Corp right now. Um, I guess they had some of their like, uh, I don't know if it was like the little containers were damaged or something. I don't know. Uh, nothing wrong with the dice. They still roll. They still have numbers on them. Those little Dragon Corp people coming to get him. Yeah, I thought it might be. Hang on they second. found him. It was found, my own my own little dragons making some noise out here. Let's see if they're okay. Oh no. Well, I guess I'm the host of the show now. Welcome to Delverex. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Take it away, Russell. Wait, Everyone where did he leave all those announcements? Were we on the Carver Games yet? I don't know. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> One of my dogs like screamed bloody murder as if my two dogs were in like a fight to the death, and I walked out and my mo uh, my mom, my wife. That's embarrassing. My wife was like, uh, <laughs> uh, my wife is like, he got his uh his nail stuck on uh like his toenail got stuck on a blanket and he scared himself and so he screamed like he was about to die. Uh so anyway, uh Little Dragon Corp. We said thank you to them for sponsoring Proficiency Bonus and uh, our other sponsor is Cardboard Castle Games. Their link is already up in the chat, but you can type exclamation point CCG to get a uh, to get another link if you want. Who knows? You can never have too many links. Uh, but Little uh, Cardboard Castle is a brick-and-mortar tabletop game store located in the United States, uh, in the uh, the state of, I almost said the great state, but questionable. Uh, the state, it certainly is a state, at least, uh, of Evans, Georgia. Um, we won't hold being in Georgia against, uh, against Cardboard Castle, though. They are a fine establishment uh, that has lots of fun, uh, fun board games and other, uh, other tabletop RPG uh, necessities. Uh, if you are not in Evans, Georgia, worry not. They have a robust online site uh, that you can do your shopping online, and they will send it to yo house. Uh, so thank you, Cardboard Castle. Thank you, uh, Little Dragon Corp. Uh, and let's dive into it, yes? So, uh, oh, I should mention, uh, Sila, Victoria, will be joining us uh, at some point, probably within the next few minutes. Um, she's, uh, she's here behind the scenes, uh, she's just muted and uh, muted and covered for the moment, um, but uh, that's why I have a a black void of sadness above my head right now. It's because we are uh, we're waiting on her to wrap up some uh, some stuff, and then she will be joining us. Uh, so last week, the crew of the Grimm's Folly had made a daring escape from the harbor of the Ignean Imperial City of Sh uh, Nope. Not Shiva Simbaria, uh, Umyath Dorai. Um, they had been there investigating uh, the trail of uh, some sort of a conspiracy involving Naporian lunar warriors that seems to tie back to uh, the Empire itself. Um, while there, Nimue was uh, temporarily held prisoner by one Arcanist Thessene, a, uh, a drow imperial um, sort of mad science type um, working in an institute called Serengras, 
uh, located in the city of Umyoth Darai. Uh, there he was apparently um, the first uh, stop that the captured uh, lunar warriors have been making um, in this uh, uh, this trail that the party is, is following. Uh, the party learned that Thessene was conducting experiments upon the lunar warriors brought to him, which in uh, about 50% of cases proved fatal. The party does not know what Thessene's ultimate purpose was, save for the fact that he was, he seemed to be testing them uh, for something um, to deem whether or not they were suitable to be sent on to uh, an individual that he referred to as his, uh, essentially his master, his uh, his teacher, um, the elusive pen dragon. The party came in, busted up the joint, killed the scene, uh, retrieved Nimue, um, and made a massive escape from the city, freeing um, a band of orcish uh, warriors who had been held captive as slaves in the slave markets, as well as a whole mess of other people that were, were in cages there. Um, they fled from the uh, the Imperial Guard forces um, and a particularly um, persistent uh, captain of the Guard um, before uh, making safe uh, safe escape on the uh, the sequel out of the range of the uh, the massive port defense um, uh, embankment that, that was uh, fired some kind of an arcane projectile. Um, they narrowly escaped with the last minute uh, assistance of a strange hooded figure who uh, at just the right moment uh, sailed a, a barge that was apparently loaded to the brim with some sort of explosive uh, into the path which intercepted a shot intended for the sequel and created enough of diversion to buy the party time to sail uh, out of the harbor and make for their rendezvous with the Grimm's Folly. And that is where we join our adventurers tonight. The, uh, the crew has regained their ship. Uh, the sequel is safely lashed uh, to the side of the Grimm's Folly. Um, you are all back aboard and preparing to take your stations. And there are currently three Ignean warships um, sailing in pursuit of you. Three Ignean warships, which I will remind you, broke off from uh, an enormous armada that had been sort of moored, hidden around the, um, uh, the, the crook of a small sort of like peninsula in the southern portion of the city um, during your initial approach. But hundreds and hundreds of Ignean warships, freshly built, um, docked uh, outside the city. Uh, three of them have broken off and are pursuing you guys. Um, so, I've had a couple of weeks to kind of ponder. We, we did sort of a little bit of a test run on the ship-to-ship um, -ship combat system that I kind of developed for this. Uh, and I'm going to make some slight tweaks to it for this week. Um, tweak number one is that I am actually going to have you guys roll initiative like you would if you were in a fight. Um, we are still going to... The same rules are going to apply... Um, like every round of combat, the combatant ships will roll an initiative. The ships will always act first. But once we've resolved that, I am going to like give you guys a turn to like go through an initiative. This way it gives you guys the opportunity to, if you want to do some like creative spell casting or, you know, stuff aboard the ship. Um, you know, probably not in this instance, but, you know, if you wanted to like, if somebody were to like, disembark the ship and go into the water or something like that you could do that um so i'm hoping that gives you guys a little more like a little more dynamic um choice in the matter as, as we get into ship to ship combat um the other thing that i'm going to do um, i'm going to add a maneuver to your list of uh, to your list of maneuvers uh, i haven't settled on exactly uh what i'm gonna call this permanently yet but for right now it's called Run Away. Um, there's not really a mechanic. We, we spent a lot of last session with you guys, like, 
trying to flee pursuing ships, but there wasn't really a mechanic to like dictate that. Um, so the way that uh, the the runaway maneuver is going to work is if you guys get into hot water, you think like, you know, oh, we're getting beat here. We need to like flee from a combat. Um, the runaway action is like the only action you will take that turn. Normally you get like three actions to choose from with the ship. If you're going to try and flee, you pick run away. Um, and then you basically will make a contested initiative roll against enemy ships. Um, if you win, you like begin the process of fleeing from combat. Um, and then you like on the next round, you repeat that, that roll and then once you have, like, if you succeed on two, two rolls, you successfully, like, flee from combat and get out of combat. Um, so I'm, I've added that, uh, that mechanic to the, to the system, just in case things get a little hairy, um, and you guys want to try and, uh, get out of dodge. Um, but, I'm going to take us now over to... our tabletop simulator with our battle map on it. And let's get ready to rumble, as they say. Uh, so uh, if you guys yeah, are... Just a, a quick question about tabletop sim. Absolutely. Um, is there a way like I can make it brighter like to where i can see more of what's on the table um i, I'm I, not, do I'm, I don't i, I don't, don't know use... if you can do it specifically but i can do it okay okay how's that oh yeah that's much better thanks there you go it's ruining my ambience you guys i'm really mad about it uh no okay so there you go a little bit brighter um for you guys the players don't worry too much about this this is just like so that we're not staring at a still map is a little, a little more dynamic um you don't really need to worry about too much of anything with uh the uh, map here i'm going to scale these guys down a little bit to give us a little more room to work with um but what we will do here is let oh geez let's get really little um let us make uh make our initiative rolls um and Sila can add herself in once she gets the opportunity. Um, but everybody go ahead and roll initiative. Um, I'm just going to roll one initiative apiece to represent, like, the crews of the other ships. And then we'll start getting into ship combat. Alexis has got a 17. Thanks. Uh, Nim Nimway got a natural 20 for 23. Woo! Yeah. 15. 6. Uh, 23 for Nimway. Nim uh, 15 for Murderbeard. Okay. 6 for Rowan. Uh, I have named these ships uh, just for ease of keeping track. Oh no! Tabletop Simulator, why? It just crashed on me too. Yeah. Yeah, the stream seems kind of choppy. Maybe it was the tabletop sim. If this is too much for... Uh... If the if the stream of the uh, the tabletop sim is too much that it like lags out the uh, the stream, I might. Uh... Yeah, we look choppy on stream right <laughs> now. All right, well, guess what, everybody? Tabletop simulator is dead powerful. now. Did tabletop like simulator is dead. Now. Do a screenshot of tabletop sim. No, I, it's dead. It's dead now. It's never coming oh, back. Oh no. <laughs> I'm in a new my new house. I'm not um I'm not hardwired into the Ethernet yet. I don't have like a thing directly into my router yet. Because my uh. Where my computer is doesn't have like a uh, a jack to put my have for my router, so I have to like. Right now I'm on Wi-Fi. Until I fix that, tabletop sim might be uh might be too powerful for one uh, uh for everything to run at the same time. Um, okay, so now we're just on this. Hopefully that's a little bit better. 
Uh, anyway, 14. Um, I had named the ships. The ships were named the Pella, the uh, the Hammer of the Empire. <laughs> Matt, you were just given five gold by chat to treat yourself to some extra Wi-Fi. Oh, thanks, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Number five was uh, Bodhi Mick Elf Boat. Um, alrighty. So, you all are uh, aboard the Grim's Folly. You have had a, a few minutes here to secure the sequel to the ship and make ready. Um, the uh, the crew is is busily like um, unlashing and like rolling out, loosing the cannons. Um, uh, the anchor has been weighed, um, and you guys are ready to engage. Uh, so there are currently three ships um, engaging on you. Um, they are nigh identical, um, save for. Uh, like, they each, beneath the, like, imperial flag that they fly at, like, the top of their mast, they, they each have, like, a slightly different variation on, uh, on a flag that seems to, like, signify their, like, which ship they are. Um, so for your guys' ease, um, let's just say that, like, one flag is red, one flag is blue, and one flag is green. Um, this way, like, as we're kind of theater of the mining this, you guys can just refer to them as, like, red, blue, or green ship. Um, and we'll know, you know, which one we are talking about. Um, so. Um. Uh, so. Um. As we enter into the first round of combat, um, however you guys want to handle it, um, let's go ahead and make those initiative rolls. Who wants to roll for the ship? Somebody has to roll Captain. for the ship. Captain? Oh, well. And remember your your initiative game. your initiative with the Grimm's Folly is currently a minus one. So you'll roll a D twenty minus one. That will be your ship's initiative. Uh well then a D twenty minus one is gonna be a seven. A seven. Uh okay, so with a seven Yeah, I shouldn't have rolled. <laughs> uh with a seven, uh you are not gonna be the first to act. So you guys do not currently have the initiative. Uh, the ship with the blue flag uh, is gonna be the first to react with a um of 13. Um, so currently, the, the three ships, they're still, like, closing on you. Um, and the uh, the ship with the blue flag is going to... Uh, uh, they're going to press the advantage to give themselves advantage on their next initiative. Uh, they are going to uh, line up And they are going to... No, I'm sorry. They're going to press the advantage. They're going to take evasive action. Um, and they are going to... Uh, bring her around. Um, so pressing the advantage will give them advantage on their next roll. Um, evasive action is going to increase the AC of their ship um, until the start of its next turn. Um, and that bringer around is going to represent them getting into position. They do not have, um, they don't have a, a weapon that they are capable of firing at you with. Uh, hey, Seal's here with uh, fiber optic lights. Um, <laughs> uh, so they, as they're like chasing after you, um, they they like roll in and they kind of start to close the gap and they um, begin to like arc around um preparing to like swing um you know basically they're coming at you like this and they are preparing to like swing the ship this way and make a pass past you like this um and broadside you it looks like 
Um, but that is going to be their turn, um, which will give uh, you guys the next initiative. The seven with a seven, you are the second to act in the initiative order here. All right, Captain, what are your orders? So you currently have three ships. Three ships have come within range of your of your weapons. You are currently faced, um, like broadside to the oncoming ships coming at you. Um, so the like the broadside cannons on your vessel on one side of the ship are pointed directly at the incoming enemy. Right. The uh, the cannons on the opposite side are obviously pointed away from them right now. Mm -hmm. And then you have your like. Uh, your ballista and your mangano and stuff have, you know, swivel. You can shoot at whatever angle. Uh, I think we should take a shot. <laughs> Adam? Sure. Which one are we shooting at? Red? Blue? The one that... The one, which mm, one? The blue, the blue, the blue, the blue one. So basically, fire. yeah, so the other two haven't acted yet, but basically if you imagine them coming at you like, like, a trident attack... The yeah. blue ship is in the middle, the and like the red and green ships are like on either side of them, and they're they're coming at you. But the blue ship is starting to like veer this way. Yeah, take a shot at the blue ship. Uh, okay, so you can use fire as one of your actions. That's fine. Um, you have two others you can take. Maybe evasive action. So yeah. Else to pick one of those. I'd say I was, evasive action is my sec is like my next bet. Yeah, I was gonna say evasive action too. How about you guys want to like? Do you want to reload right after we fire so that way we can be ready to shoot again before? Be ready to shoot turn. again before we get too far out of. If I mean, if we're leaving, yeah, we can take another shot before we scoot. But you can also just to you know uh, not to not to influence you, but just to like familiarize you with you with the mechanics that you want you could theoretically fire bring her around and fire again and shoot shoot both of your you could you could broadside them one way flip around and broadside the other way in the same turn it's a little funky to like real world ship mechanics but like right. in the system in the system as it's designed you do have that ability okay that would leave you with you you would not be you'd have to reload both of right. those cannons next yeah. round and you'd have no no weapons right. to fire Someone else is going to have to make the decision. I am still reacquainting myself with what's happening right now. Oh, so I, I, I can't do it. I Alien. think... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think fire, evasive action, and reload is good for now. And then I think All we right. should maybe on the next turn try to run a, start running a little. Okay. Oh, I was going to say brace, but... Keep, or brace. Keep brace work too. I'm going to ask you guys to do that for your own ship so that I don't have to keep track of it. Um, keep track of, like, when you fired things, what you have to reload, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, okay, so you're going to take a shot, you're going to take evasive action, and then you're going to reload, right? Or do we want to brace? It's up to you guys on the last one. What does Captain think? I think that all sounds good. All right, brace. <laughs> brace, okay. Brace. So fi fire, evasive action, and brace. We'll reload okay. on the next round, I think. Alrighty. Um, so, go ahead and... Somebody can make me a weapon attack with your broadside cannons against one of the three ships. Who wants to roll? Well, damn, I'll do it. All right. There you go. You have a nope. plus five to hit with your broadside cannons. Not good. Uh, so I rolled a nine. That's a plus five. Is fourteen. Not quite enough. Um, so the, uh, the, the, the cry goes up. One of, one of you officers yells out, fire! Um, Apora Dazan repeats the, uh, repeats the command, uh, calling out to the crew, fire! And, uh, there's like a, a, a general, like, cry goes up across the deck of the ship, like, ah! And, uh, like, wicks on cannons are lit. And... <laughs> Uh, the three broadside cannons on your, uh, 
let's call it your port side, uh, roar and a, a plume of smoke uh, billows out from the uh, the port side of the ship. Uh, but as the uh, the three approaching ships are coming in, you, you haven't quite ranged in on them yet. And you kind of hear the like <laughs> splish of the cannonballs hitting into the water. Um, with that, the next ship to go is going to be the ship with the red uh, flag. And actually, this, the, I'm going to do both of these ships at the same time, because they're basically going to do the same thing in Mirror. Uh, they are both going to take evasive action. Uh, they are both going to uh, line up. Uh, and they are both going to... No, I'm sorry. They're both going to take evasive action. They're both going to bring her around. And they're both going to fire. Um, so as the three ships come in, that middle one with the blue flag is like coming right at you and starting to like turn this way for like a direct broadside the other two fork in either direction um and begin to like sail uh to come in and, and basically like they are trying to catch you in sort of like a pincer maneuver um so the red and green ships as they like come out and swing around they angle to face their own uh broadside cannons at you and they are both going to fire um, against the uh, against folly. Um, so you guys, uh, you guys did evasive action and brace, right? Yes. Okay, so your armor. No, is... wait, no. Did we do evasive action or did we do? We did evasive action and brace. Okay. You're right. I thought they thought, but they couldn't remember. Okay. Um, so the two attacks against you. Uh, let's see, your armor class should be a 20, right? 20 right now. Yep. Uh, okay, so attack number one. Uh, so it's a 19, which will not hit it. Uh, and the other one is a 21. Just makes it. Um, so, uh, from the ship, uh, with the green flag, um, you hear the, like, <laughs> of cannons... Uh, firing, and a moment later, uh, the sound of like <laughs> splintering wood rips across the deck as uh, several cannonballs uh, basically just like blast into the side of the ship. Wood flies everywhere. Um, the smell of gunpowder and, and uh, splintered wood fill the air as a thick layer of smoke like rolls across the deck. Uh, the Grimm's Folly to its hull is going to take 18 points of damage. Is that reduced? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, no, so you will take... Um, you will take less damage than that. Uh, curse me for designing a system. That take, four, four take four damage. out of it. If we took 18, then it's 14 if we reduce by 25%. Uh, sure. I think 18 damage times 0. 0.25 is 4.5, so I think round it up, I think we take 5 damage off of that. I mean, yeah, if you want to per, round up, that per works Per D&D rules, well, per D&D rules, you, you round up, so I'm going to take 5 off of it, so you will take 13 damage to the hull. Got it. Did... Oh no, the sequel got hit last time, but this is the first. This round is the first time the Grimm's yeah. Folly. This okay. is the first time the Grim's Folly has taken. Double checking, and that was the red ship that hit us, or the green ship? That hit us? Was the green ship that hit you? Okay, just making sure I have my notes clear. Um, Thank. Alrighty, uh, so at this point, all three boats have acted. Um, before I go, rather than like go in line here, I'll just ask you if any of you as players want to do anything on, like, a round of initiative here. Vibe. Vibe? Okay. Yeah, just vibing. Hey, uh, Dyxus would... No, how close are these ships? Yeah, good uh, you guys are, like, cannon range from each other, so you guys are shooting, like... You're probably, like, at least a few hundred feet from each other, just, like, okay. lobbing cannons from a distance. They are trying to close on you, um, so as this battle progresses, like, unless you guys specifically state that you're trying to, like, just dis distance from them, um, eventually this, like, this fight will get within, like, spell-flinging range if you, you know, if you want to start doing that. 
Um, are, are the is the fleet of ships like within visual range still? No, no, no. You guys have okay. like sailed well away from that. Like, yeah, there's not there's not like three hundred ships just like watching you guys duke it out with these guys. <laughs> is is tea kettle currently in the crow's nest? Um. If you want T Kettle to be in the crow's nest, T Kettle will be in the uh, the crow's nest. Well, Thyxis is going to just go ahead and start making his way towards the crow's nest. Okay. Make your way. Mm, I can't Make say your my voice. We'll won't do let me it. Say. We'll do it for you. We'll Pain do it for you. Downtown, walking yeah. fast, gonna get to T Kettle. Da -da 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 <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So you, yeah, you absolutely you can start heading towards the crow's nest. Um, so you probably are um, you know, having to be a little cautious. It's it's pretty chaotic on the deck. Like people are running back and forth. Like um, there's like bits oh, of wood I've across fully, the deck. I fully intended to take Texas <laughs> a very long time. <laughs> Murderbeard is evading. You know, Murderbeard is doing evasive action. So he's like throwing the wheel one way. The ship is like listing as you guys are maneuvering. Um, so you kind of like, you're like using your, your newly acquired sea legs to like, ugh, get across the deck. Um, alrighty. Uh, as we enter Rowan a new would, round of I combat. Probably, Oop, go ahead. I would probably not necessarily follow Thyxis up because I don't really want to go up that high, but to be like, stop going far away. I, if I can't reach <laughs> you, I can't heal you. And like kind of head toward, like, I can't do anything at a distance. I need somebody in my range. So I'm going to sure. kind of. Follow Thyxis, but not climb up. I'm gonna be like at the bottom, almost ready to catch this dumbass. And, yeah, yeah and, and honestly, cool. and honestly, Thyxis is only about five feet up right now, and he's just looking straight up towards the crow's nest, holding on, going, "I'm not looking back. I'm not looking back. It's too high up." <laughs> and just, <laughs> and it's Ray, I'm gonna try and stay central to my party, within thirty feet of my party, for, for okay. as much as I can. Sure. So you're kind of like you sort of plant yourself amidship yeah. somewhere. Um, okay. All right, go ahead and roll an initiative for the ship as we enter a new round of combat. Uh, the the blue flagship will roll with advantage um, as they took that maneuver. Rolled real bad, but I have a bunch of new dice from Little Dragon that I didn't get to show off because I wasn't Ooh. here for the ad read. I could roll a Little Dragon dice. Okay. You can roll, you can roll a Little Dragon dice. Yeah. I forgot Where to show my Little Dragon dice. We call I that, the, we call that the, little, the little dragon advantage. This is my Christy oh, dice. Okay, I'm gonna roll Deep Ocean. Deep Ocean. Deep yeah. Ocean, how perfect. Yeah, it's called uh, Elemental Dice, Deep Ocean. Nice. <gasps> Gang, okay, how much... Wait, we have minus one, don't we? Minus we? one to your initiative. 16. 16. With a 16, you will go first. <laughs> Little dragon! <laughs> uh, already, Grim's Folly, you guys are the... Uh, you guys have the advantage this round. What are you doing? Um, okay, so w do we need to reload this round? I think you... If we want to fire again with those cannons we do, we still have the other cannons and the mangonel, if I'm remembering this correctly. You have a ballista and a mangonel, which can both be fired, oh, like, omnidirectionally. Um, oh, if okay. you want to use cannons again, you will have to use bring her around as one of your maneuvers to turn the ship to get to get your starboard side cannons in line. Could we, what if we, okay, guys, like, not to be, like, a little kooky, like, a little crazy here, but what if we did bring her around and then line up and then fire so we can roll with advantage? We can do that. But we also wouldn't get any protection. We would have no protection. That's my only concern. Yeah, and all three of I... them are currently, like... <laughs> yeah, there's three versus yeah. one. Surrounding us. We have to do at least a base of action. We have to. Yeah, I, I think... We're, we're... Yeah, mm. I'm I'm good with taking a shot with the other cannons or using the mangonel or something else. Yeah, keep in mind. Using list, okay. Um, I will remind you: you guys do not have to just shoot at the hull. You can call your right. shots. If you if you look at that green box on the table there, you can shoot at the hull. You can shoot at the sails. You can shoot at the the helm. They have different ACs. Like some of them are harder to hit. But, like, you can theoretically disable these ships without having to fully destroy them. Right. Besties, I really think we should fire at their sails and then just get <laughs> off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's something you did, Miss Victoria. There's a there's a new maneuver runaway, which we use for the it. entire... We use, but we use it for the entire round. We don't get to do that plus two other things. It's, like, 
the only action for the whole round. Runaway um, is basically, you will then make a contested, like, initiative roll. Um, if you win, you, like, begin the process of fleeing, um, and then you have to do it again on the next round, and once you have, like, succeeded twice at that, you escape combat. Can, so for the fire action, is that can, all of our weapons can fall under that, or each kind of weapon takes one fire action? Every, like, so you could take, theoretic, well, no, you can't now because you have to bring around, but, like, let's say you you had all of your weapons reloaded. You could theoretically take the fire action three times. You could shoot your broadside cannons, you could shoot your mangonel, and you could shoot your ballista all in the same round. That's all three actions in fi are used and, for fire. And that's all three actions is used for fire. So you can take, you can take the fire action up to three times, you can take the fire action as long as you have a weapon that can be fired with it. The no, only thing I you really can't do oh, is you can't, like, you can't fight, like, you couldn't fire your broadsides, reload your broadsides, and fire them yeah. again in the same round. You do, and that, do, you do have to, like, reload okay. over the next round. I think the mangonel would be really juicy, you guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we could do both, the mangonel and the ballista and evasive and fire twice. Yeah, do ballista and mangonel aimed at some sails. Aimed at some sales. And then just be like, bye. And like, <laughs> evasive. <laughs> um, okay. What? Do you like evasive? Does anyone have, a, does anyone have any... Yeah, no, I'm that? sorry. No, what? We should take a shot while we can and then maybe run away after this one. Yeah, play. honestly, we have to try to disable them a little bit. Yeah, I think I think a ballista fire, Meganel fire, both at the sales and action sounds. Yeah. Just dumb enough to maybe work. Okay. <laughs> I am a nervous person. Um, okay, so you're going to, you're going to fire two weapons and you're going to evasive maneuvers, right? Yes. Alrighty, go ahead and roll those attacks for me. Uh, you have a plus six to hit with your ballista, and you have a plus five to hit with your mangonel. Can I take the ballista? Yeah. Okay, who wants the mangonel? Just, you want to roll the, or Victoria, you want to roll the mangonel since you want to, you want to. I can roll it, I already rolled two dice, so you roll. <laughs> Someone maybe else the, roll. maybe yeah, you, roll. Roll. you haven't rolled. Okay, okay. Yeah, Brittany, you roll the mangonel, so add a plus five. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, 24 for those 24? sales. Yeah. 24 definitely hits. That's 5d10 for the mangonel. Oh, shoot, I have to do math now. Okay. And you said 19 I thought, I thought on the she's... ballista? I'm on ballista. I'm on mangonel. What were yeah. the two hits? It was a 24 on the ballista, and what was the other one? 19. Okay, yes, yeah, so both both of those hit. Okay. Ugh, what do I roll? You roll 3d10 for the ballista. Ballista Callista. That's how I remember that you're doing that. I love that. Okay. Uh, who are you shooting at? Mm. Is one of them, like, being really mean? Green hit us, right? Oh, green hit green. you. Green hit At you. Blue is blue is like s dead center to you. But and green Red's, hit us. Red's just vibing. Green did hit you. Yes. I think we should aim for the same ship. Yeah. Yeah. Take it out. Green. Red yeah. may be vibing, green. but they're plotting. They're <laughs> yeah, plotting Red. Yeah, Michael. Red. 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 I don't trust Red. Green already fired some of their weapons, so they have to reload. Oh. I don't trust Red. Red's doing something. All right. Red, <laughs> Red, Red. So Red. Red and I, uh, I mean, they did also I... try to shoot you. They just missed. Yeah, they missed. Yeah, but why they got a red flag? You know, that's <laughs> sus. It is sus. Christy, what damage did you get? Uh, I'm counting. Yeah, uh, I am too. 19? 19? Is that how... Yeah. No, just a flat. It's just a flat. The plus is oh, to hit. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah, do flat damage. Okay. Nineteen, nineteen. Okay. Uh, I got twenty-three. Nineteen and twenty-three. So you have Both done a total of forty-two damage to the sails. So you, uh, uh, you guys run over. Um, I mean, we can, we can, uh, we can inject a little role play flavor into this. Like, what are are you guys? Manning these, you know, like did Nimue physically fire the ballista? Are you guys yelling orders to crew members? Oh no, Nimue definitely would. Oh no, she <laughs> wants to stay central. She would make an order for it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Rowan trusts herself with a, with a mango. 
<laughs> so she would she would probably uh I'm assuming at this point it's like everyone's up on the deck, so I would honestly probably yell for Grohl to get over there and shoot the dang thing. <laughs> Grohl's like, um, like running over. He's like, oh, the bloody cool, but fun. Uh, like, Megan is like the big heavy one, right? It's basic, yeah. It's basically like a chain shot type of type of deal. Okay, then I'll help him move it. That's what Syl is doing, is helping to move the Megan. Okay. She has no spells or abilities. And left. you have like other crew members, like you know, like if, if like Scylla and Grohl like angle this thing and like <clears throat> fire it like two or three other crew members immediately like begin like floating reloading it you know like if you're gonna take the reload action it's not like you guys are having to run around and do all this you have crew at your disposal um okay the total of 42 damage the ballista <clears throat> fires off um and the mangonel shortly behind it like sort of the like clink rattle of chain as it whirls through the air out into the darkness um, and a, uh, a few seconds later, you kind of like lose sight of the projectiles as they rip away from the Grimm's Folly. Um, but a few seconds later, you hear the telltale like shredding of canvas and cracking of wood as as these projectiles strike into the mainsail and mast of the uh, the pursuing ship with the green flag. Um, you kind of hear like a distant like ah like shout of like. Uh, alarm from the uh, the deck of that ship as it is struck, um, and you see part of the sails begin to be tattered, and like you hear like the the, the s- distant snap of of line as uh, uh, ropes break and pieces of sail like rip away and are shredded. Um, okay, very effective round. Um, that is going to bring us to the ship with the blue sails. So. This round, they're going to reload the weapon that they fired at you the first time. Um, They are going to uh, line up, and they are going to... Well, actually, they can't do all three of those things. They are going to uh, bring her around, uh, reload, and um, fire. So they're going to reload the first set of cannons they shot. They're going to bring her around to like line the other ones up with you, and they're going to fire those. Um, so they will take a shot at you. Uh, and 18 plus things. Fire! Uh, what are they firing at the hull? They are firing at the hull. Yeah, um, so your AC is your well, AC. Well, you, you braced, right? It's twenty. It's we twenty. I mean, they action. they got you anyway. Um, because they got a twenty three to hit, so they are going to hit you. Um, or you evasive action, not brace. So you'll take full damage here, but they, they did still manage to get you. Um, so you guys, uh, the, the Hull of the Grim's Folly is going to take... ...24 points of bludgeoning damage as the... <laughs> ...cannonballs hit slightly, uh, slightly below, um, like, in, like, the mid-deck... Um, and you guys hear the, like, the crack and rattle of, like, these cannonballs rip through into, like, the hold of the ship, and a bunch of stuff is just, like, smashed downstairs. Um, that is, uh, gonna be their turn. Um, so they've reloaded their other cannons. Um, they have fired once, and that'll be all they're gonna do. Uh, the, uh, red and green ships... Um, they are both going to, um, I actually think they're going to do the same thing. They're going to bring her around to line up their other sets of cannons. They're going to reload the first shots they took, and they're both going to fire at you as well. Uh, oh boy. That is a four. Uh, she's not going to cut it. Uh, and a 21, which will just hit. Uh, so, an additional... You would think I would have learned better than to not put my D10s down after I just rolled. I somehow managed to lose all of my D10s. What have I done? Just roll some D4s instead. It's fine. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to roll percentile dice. I, I don't know how I managed to lose three D10s in the span of like one second. Like, how is this even possible? How have I accomplished this? Would you like me to roll a d10 for you? No. Okay. 
Oh, here they are, I think. Uh, another 19 points of damage to the hull. Uh, keep in mind those damage thresholds. I don't think you're approaching anything necessarily yet. Um, it would be 200 would be the threshold. Because we well, have 400 out of 300, right? You have 400 uh, HP, but like keep in mind when you start getting to like... 50% uh, mark is when we take on water. We take on water, but... Um, when you have taken, like, oh yeah, I see what you, I see, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, so at 50% at 50 damage, like, you have to worry about taking on water, you also have to start worrying about crew casualties. Um, but you guys are okay for now, I would, I would think. Um, okay, so as, uh, as the second round of combat ends, I think the, um, uh, the two ships here, or the three ships here have now closed um kind of closed the distance and basically like you guys are sort of like circling each other at this point um everybody's like sort of maneuvering and out maneuvering and re-maneuvering each other um but uh at some of the closest points here i think like you guys are passing within like 60 70 feet of these other ships so like we're kind of in range where if you guys want to start like flinging spells from the deck uh you can do that on your initiative so um if if folks are going to do something this round, if you want, um, the first to act uh, individually would be Nimue. I don't think I can do much as a fighter. I don't have spells to sling. <laughs> um, but I am going to stay within range of my party, so if any of them are spellcasters and throwing stuff, I can protect potentially pull up a protective field so that's me like holding my action to like okay. try and save okay. somebody from too much hurt cool, cool. um already thanks uh, that's gonna bring us to you i just keep on making my way up to the crow's nest um make an athletics check as you start climbing the uh the ladder to the crow's nest crow's nest athletics this should be real good <laughs> That's super high. Oh my. Say. I rolled a natural 20. Minus one is a 19. Hey, <laughs> oh my God, good you. Job. I, I, so I think with that roll, I think you're like, you're like climbing up, climbing up, climbing up. You're ready for like, you know, you're like, I'm, I'm not a strong boy. I've skipped, I've skipped upper body day and lower body day for the past roughly uh, 38 years. 38 years of my life. <laughs> uh, but like I think I think Murderbeard like turns the wheel to make one of these like evasive maneuvers just as you guys like crest like the rolling top of a wave and so the Grimace Folly sort of like kind of tips this way and that way and the result is that you sort of just get like your momentum sort of like propels you several rungs upward um, so I think at, at the end of the second turn here I think you're like crest the top you like grab the 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 sides of like the 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 bucket of the crow's nest and like begin to pull yourself up into it. Hey um, kettle, help me up. <laughs> you feel like a tri like a tri fingered avian like grab the back of your your shirt and sort of like she's pretty little so she's not like it's not like you get like hauled in. It's more like it's like a nine year old girl is like. <laughs> <laughs> sort of trying to help you. Still um, stronger than I am. <laughs> she helps you a little bit. She gets you up in there. Um, and you are up into the crow's nest um, with uh, with tea kettle. That would probably be my turn. It would probably okay. take me my whole turn to do that. All right. No problem. Uh, Murderbeard, anything that you want to do? You are at the helm, I think, at this point. Yeah. Um... I don't know, there's nothing I can specifically do that isn't part of, like, the actual ship mechanics, right? No, you can do anything you want. Like, you know, you're, you're, I've established, like, you are in range that, like, theoretically, if you want to shoot a crossbow at a guy, like, on the deck of the other ship, you can. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to try and shoot a crossbow at the guy steering. Which ship? Uh, red Whatever the closest green. one is. Uh, probably blue. So you can take the shot. I am gonna make you take the shot at disadvantage, though. Okay. Uh, 
You're shooting and driving at the same time. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, that is a. The lower of the two was actually a sixteen, so that's a twenty-two to hit. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll damage with your what crossbow. What happens when you roll a sixteen and a seventeen? <laughs> you hit. Roll damage. That is max damage shows nine points of damage. <laughs> so I imagine like Murderbeard like spins the wheel of the Grim's Folly like Tokyo Drift style. And the guy on the guy like at the helm of the ship with the blue flag is like turning and just like looks up to see the Grim's Folly like swing past as Murderbeard just like Comes like, comes like swinging into view with the crossbow. <laughs> it just, uh, and you, your crossbow like strikes the the helmsman of the the enemy ship in the shoulder, and he like ah! falls backwards. Uh, I'm gonna give them disadvantage on their next initiative roll uh, as they like. It's gonna take a second for them to like either that guy to regain control of the ship or them to, like, push him out of the way and get a not-crossbow-shot helmsman into position. What movie is it? There's definitely some movie where somebody, like, Tokyo drifts a car and then, like, shoots a gun out of the window. What, what I am I know. thinking? I mean, my it's, heart... pro it's probably Tokyo Drift. I was like, my it's heart tells me... So. My heart one tells me it's a Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah. <laughs> one of the 18 million. Or is it that, um... I've never seen them. Well, I know it's a movie I've oh, seen. I know what you're talking about too. I can see the clip, but I can't remember the movie. I'll remember we'll it later. It yeah. This episode of Movie Facts brought to you by people who are not good at this. Don't know what movies we're talking about. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, hmm. uh, movie trivia about the Fast and the Furious. Uh, <laughs> the Rock Ooh. is in them. Well, yeah, Rowan. Uh, that's gonna bring us to you. Anything you want to do? Just watching Thikes just get up there, make sure he doesn't fall. I can't do anything. None of my spells get any get me anywhere helpful to anybody, so I'm just staying there okay. like, oh god, oh no, oh no. <laughs> um, alrighty, then uh top of the order. Ships ships initiative time. Wait, did Sela even roll an like initiative yet? Personal? Oh yes, we never had Sela roll a personal initiative. Go ahead and uh, do that for me, Sela. Not that I can do anything, I have no spells, I have nothing. Um, 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 that's a 16. 16, all right. Do you have cantrips? Uh, not that go 60 feet. Oh, okay. If, they, if we come within 30 feet of a ship, though, I'll totally shape water to free some, some of the, like, spray that's on the deck, because that's literally all I can do. Nice. Chat just sent me a three-minute clip that I'm not watching. Um, okay. Uh, go ahead and roll, uh, roll initiative for the Grimm's Folly for this round of combat. Who hasn't rolled a dice yet? A die? Whatever. I don't think Dice has for the ship yet. Do it. Right? Do it, Michael. Alright, let me roll it up. This is minus one? Minus one to your initiative, yes. Uh, that's gonna be a nine. A nine! Uh, well, you don't go last, so that's good news. Uh, but you definitely don't go first. Uh, with an initiative of 20, uh, the green ship is going to go first. Uh, and they are going to... Uh, they're going to... They're going to keep doing the same thing. They're going to bring her around, they're going to fire, and they're going to reload. Yep, that's working so far. It's cocked. Uh, I don't think that's going to do it, though. Uh, no, that's only a 14, so they do not manage to hit you guys this round. Even having acted first, the unfortunate Which fools. ship was that? This was the green ship, the one whose sails you guys took a chunk out of. Uh, next to act is... red, didn't we? 
I wrote it down as green, but I can change it to red. Oh, we definitely got red. Yeah, because the red is a red sussy is little. Oh, because they were off. sus. I thought <laughs> I thought you had shot the green because they had attacked you. We thought about it, but then we're like, no, red okay. is sus. Alrighty. Uh, well, uh, speaking of being sus, it is red start. Uh, and... Literally, red could have been sitting in the corner minding its own business, <laughs> and we still would have went after it. <laughs> Red was like a ship carrying medicine for like orphanages, and you guys are like that's us. <laughs> Shoot them. Uh, they are going to. Uh, they're gonna bring her around. They're gonna fire, um, and they're gonna brace. This time. Uh, ooh, no, yeah, they're gonna brace. Uh, and they roll a five. Uh, so that's. Not even close. Uh, so, what cannons going off on either side of you? Um, and all you guys hear is just a like splish of cannonballs hitting the water as you guys like fishtail the ship in the water uh, to evade incoming fire. Um, with a seven, you guys will go third initiative, which makes it your turn. All right, guys, we have one side of cannons loaded. Everything else needs to be reloaded. Yes. <laughs> I kind of want to run, but I always want to run from mm -hmm. ship battles. So. Oh, I'm torn. I also want to run. But I also just want to, like, sink at least one of them. Or, like, stop at least one of them. I know, same. What would what would Captain's desire be for this? Yeah, um, I think Nimue's ego is getting in the way because like they really messed up her her people. No, Brittany wants to run. Rowan wants them all to go down. <laughs> There's a difference here. I think we can shoot them. <laughs> Bring them around, shoot, and some invasive again. Well, we need to. We should super reload if we're planning on like fighting. We should like. Super... Well, we have to bring it around to get to the other cannons. Is the so, so yeah. So bring it we around. Will no, we will have no. We will have no protection if we reload. Well, what if we like? What if we like? Um, kind of like tiptoe off for a little while we're reloading. Protect ourselves. Well, evasive action and reload. Twice? And ev evasive action. Evasive action. Um. And then, well, yeah, I, I guess we, like double. We shoot could, the one that's loaded and then run. We could do one of those things like in the movies where we pretend to be running away while we're reloading, and then we spin around like, you know, motorcycles getting ready to charge each other and then just <laughs> go right at them. Yeah, because if we do evasive action and reload <laughs> twice, that means we have like three available, right? Because if, if we. Oh, there's. Been... Or two available. Boats don't turn like that, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> the rounds are not. The rounds are not actually six seconds, like in this. Yeah, like yeah these They're are like, longer. Yeah, these are definitely yeah. like they, we've abstracted the scale of time here. Yeah. So like, we you guys have to reload per weapon, right? Yes. Yeah. So if, so you have three three currently like depleted weapons. You will need to reload three times to get all those functioning. Yeah. So if we do evasive and reload twice, they think we're running. I think we should. Laugh. I think we should do that, and then we should just like boom, 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 and then run, <laughs> and then run, run. <laughs> we have hit, but we have hit points, guys. We're fine. What do you think, Captain? Is is like the? I I will just just I will remind you, you do have the naval ram on your ship, which is a hundred points of damage that you can deal to somebody by running your ship into them before you actually damage yourselves. Yeah, but see, I think we should, like, fire more, disable one, like, ram, disable one, basically take red down, because that's already, like, we did a lot of damage to their sail. I think we could hurt their sail with one more, like, big round like we did, and then we should ram an the, you know what, honestly, like, green, like, is also acting a little sus. I think we should ram green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in rank red then green and then Everybody blue. Vote green. Vote green. <laughs> vote green. Green says. Reject green. All Reject right. Green. So what is the consensus here? What are you guys doing <laughs> with your round? I lost the thread about five minutes ago. I've just been enjoying I think the, the ride. Double reload and evade is what we're gonna do. Double yeah, reload I think and evade. Been double reload to make it look like we're what? Clean. Which weapons are you reloading? Um. The biggest ones. The mangonel. <laughs> mangonel. The mangonel. <laughs> In the uh, cannons, probably. Or the so, ballista. 
The cannons on e- each side does 3d10 bludgeoning damage. Mm-hmm. Correct. For now, because you have three cannons on each side, you can... I have the note there, like, you can, as you upgrade the ship, you can add more. You can have up to six cannons on each I side think, of the ship. I think Maybe we some... the ballista and the mangonel. Yeah, because the ballista and the mangonel, we can keep, like, Tokyo drifting around. Yeah, yeah. And the ballista has a plus six to hit. It's a plus, one, like, an extra one to hit. More of a chance. Cool. Okay. Okay. Alrighty, so your evasive action will increase the AC of your ship. Um, the two weapons, consider them reloaded for next round. Um, alrighty, any uh, any player characters doing anything this round? As you guys like are basically just like weaving in and out of each other with these with these ships. Nimway will probably go to the ballista. She's okay. probably really irritated. Uh, Nimue, you, like, run over to the ballista, you, like, you grab and start to, like, haul it into position. Um, as you do, uh, Movor, uh, like, comes up from the side of, like, the side, and as you, like, swivel it around, Movor heaves up by himself one of these, like, eight-foot-long bolts and just, like, (laughs) chunks it in, um, and then, like, cranks the wheel to, like, (laughs) lever the action back and prepare the, uh, the weapon to fire. Um, Thyxis would like to take a look at the green and blue vessel. Yes. It's particularly at the wheels, like who's manning the wheel. And is there other individuals like standing next to or around the people that are on the wheel? Like, can I see the captains? Can I, you know, I'm just kind of perceiving and seeing yeah, make what, a perception check. what that looks like. Okay. All right, perception, not very good. I'm going to use my inspiration that I have. Okay. And roll again. And I'm glad I did. 19 plus 1 is a 20. 20. Uh, So the 20, I'm going to give you some information about all three ships. Okay. Uh, you You see three things. Uh, the first thing you see is that you catch sight now that you guys are closer um, the the battlefield is getting kind of hazy now right like Mm -hmm. cannons have been fired off quite a few times now so it's just like smoke is kind of filling the area here Um, but as as these ships sort of like wheel around each other and and are are like weaving in and out as you guys kind of sail on on this further like um, like north-ish westerly heading that you guys had been fleeing in um you see the uh the ship with the uh the red sails um you see like emblazoned on the prow of the ship um is the uh the name of the pella uh you see that the blue ship uh is named the the emperor's hammer And you see that the green ship is named Bodhi McElf Boat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> those are the names of the three ships. So that's the first thing you see. Uh, the second thing you see is um, across all three of them, the activity on the deck looks very similar. Um, there is a, a helmsman at each one. Uh, the, the one that Murderbeard shot, um, has been, like, replaced, it seems like. The, the person manning the helm of that, that vessel is now not, doesn't have an arrow in them. Um, it looks as if the, like, standard protocol for the, for the Igni Navy is that the captain is also on the... the Stern Castle. I know that I'm pronouncing that wrong. I know that there's, like, a, a funny old English way that Stern Castle is pronounced, but that's what I'm calling it. Um, the captain is up there, like, where the helm is, um, but is, like, next to the helmsman. And they're, like, you see the three captains, like, barking orders to the, you know, like, the various people aboard the ship. Um, 
The third thing that you see is that aboard the Pella, aboard the red ship, um, there are individuals who are like climbing up into the rigging and are attempting to, um, they can't really make repairs to the sails right now, but they are attempting to like secure a lot of the like rigging that was broken and damaged when you guys shot through it um, to like keep the sails more in intact. Um, so there's like a handful of sailors like up in the the rigging on the pillow right now. So those are the three things that you you notice with that perception check. Um, okay. And uh, anybody else want to do anything? Any peeps? Going once, going twice. Alrighty. New round of combat. Roll those initiatives. Oh boy. Russ, roll. What is it? What do we have? We have a plus six? You have a minus Min one. Minus one. Oh. I have close. a plus six. <laughs> close. No, minus no, one. No, it's better be that has a plus six. <laughs> uh, that is a 15. 15? Okay. Uh, the hammer is going to go first. Uh, the hammer of the emperor. Uh, they are going to... They're going to press the advantage. Uh, they're going to reload and they are going to take evasive action. Uh, so they'll get advantage next round. They're not going to shoot you this round, but they are going to re they're like both of their weapons are now reloaded. Um and uh, they have an, an increased AC for the uh, the hammer, the blue ship. Uh, that is going to be them. You, what was what was the the Grimm's Falls initiative? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, so you guys will go next then. Uh, so the Grimm's Folly is up after the uh, the hammer of the Empire takes their takes their turn. I think we should just fuck up Ryan. I really think we should just end it all and uh, destroy I'm their sails. I think we should really destroy their sails. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, I'm on the ballista. Are we shooting everything, or what are we doing? Their sails. Well, we can't shoot everything because no. I think we just enough. we shoot with the mangonel and the ballista at their sails, and then evasive. Or do you have something else in mind, Captain? No, that. That's good for me, Captain. Whatever you want to do. What, what do we want? We were asking you. I have no you're strong gonna, feelings. One you're going to get voted other. out as the yeah. captain if you don't start making some decisive <laughs> actions here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the evasive yeah. action has been pretty clutch. I think yeah, I really can do that, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Serpentine. So evasive <laughs> action, and then you are firing the mangonel and the ballista. Yeah. All At the right. sails of um, the red one, Pella or whatever. The Pella, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Hit uh, all of the people, guys. Go Please ahead, go ahead and roll to hit. Yeah, A 18 plus 6. That definitely hits. Yeah. Uh, I know. Brittany, do you want to roll the mangonel or should I roll the mangonel? You can roll it. Okay. Jade, go. Uh, 18 damage. Okay. The mangonel is an 18 to hit. 18 hits. Oh. Okay. Two, three, four, five, D10. Better roll high. Okay. 19, 26, 31. 36. Damn. I got a 10, a 9, two fives, and a 7. The nice. ballista rockets away from the Grimace Folly. Uh, you guys are close enough now. You see the ballista rip straight through the lower part of the mainsail, and you hear it like... <laughs> embed itself into the mast and there is like a raging like 
as the like the mast like cracks practically in half. The mangonel follows it up, rips through more portions of the sails. Uh, there's like a cacophony of like screams as like dudes who are like holding on to like rigging and stuff as this mangonel just like rips through uh and like hits and wraps around the mast you hear like ropes snap and guys get like flung off of parts of the rigging um there are wilhelm several screams. like several yeah there's a lot of wilhelm screams as several like there's like several splashes as people go overboard there's a couple of uh less fortunate uh like sickening like curse splorches as dudes don't miss the boat when they fall and like fall 30 40 feet onto like the deck um the sails are still up uh but like i think at this point you can see the main like the the the, like the mizzen mast is like wobbling as as like the ship continues to maneuver so the sh the sails are not quite disabled. Do they suffer like the the damage effects of it, or is it like you no. have to take the you, then you have the, to take the, them down? Like the the um the hull is sort of where like I mean if you just if you disable the sails they're out of the fight. Gotcha. But like they're not taking on water right because you're not shooting their hull you're shooting their sails. No, I mean because there's the damage like and crew casualties has also what happens with sail da and mass damage helm and rudder damage ramp like there's the threshold oh yeah yeah happens. yeah like they're definitely like they're definitely going to be screwed slow. on their initiative and slow yes 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 yeah all of that is in effect um okay oh no chat says one of their coin purses splashed onto our deck so uh we find five gold everybody add one gold because no individual person was <laughs> uh listed <laughs> oh goodness one of them uh, bounces up into the crow's nest Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, gold um okay uh so that the hammer went you guys went uh so Bodie mcelf boat and the pella are gonna go now uh they are both going to uh they're gonna continue continue the same kind of chain of actions here they're gonna bring her around they're gonna fire and they're gonna reload uh, whoop. oh not good uh you guys initiate your guys ac is currently at 20 right Beep. The, the better, uh, well, they, they they each rolled an attack. Uh, the higher of the two is a 17. So that is not going to do it. So Murderbeard deftly navigating the ship, uh, turning, anticipating the, the line of fire of the enemy broadside cannons and keeping you guys from, from firing as they <laughs> fire off and, and always seem to find the Grimace Folly just sort of like narrowly angling at them so that instead of the the vulnerable side of the ship, the, the cannons just <laughs> whiz past, uh, like vertically, just <laughs> past the ship. Uh, that is going to bring us to uh, individual actions, if any players would like to take actions. Uh, Thyxis, you, you are up in the crow's nest. Um, tea Kettle is, like, looking up, uh, and then when, like, <laughs> the cannons go off, Tea Kettle's, like, whoop, going down, going back up. Tea Kettle, like, looks to you, opens her beak, and you just hear, like, Cannon sounds coming out of tea kettle. I know it's really loud. I get it. <laughs> and, um, I think somebody else has a higher initiative than I do. Uh, I think. Can, I have. Yeah, I was just gonna ask. Can Nimue look for like a ranged bow weapon? Sure. They were theoretically okay. aboard the ship. Um, yeah. I want to do that. I want to be able to shoot something. Uh, yeah. So I think. Um, I think in narrative here, you can probably, like, you're the boss on the ship, right? You can just be like, yeah. bow! And somebody will put a bow in your yeah. hand, like, momentarily. <laughs> uh, so you, you yell that, someone yeah. just, like, passes a bow and an arrow to you from, from like, you kind of lose them in the in the shuffle immediately. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's fine. This, this hand appears from off screen. <laughs> it, just, just, yeah. it just comes in, like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Can I, can I do that? Is that my action this turn? Is just to ask for a bow? No, I think ask for a bow is a free action, so you can you can, right, uh, right. you can take a shot with a bow. Um, I don't suppose I can aim to try and take out that sail, can I? No, I think. Well, I actually was thinking about this a little bit before. I think the way that I the way that I'm gonna rule this is like. Just, like, r standard run-of-the-mill attacks are not really going to, like, meet the damage threshold for ships. Now, okay. like, if you were to find some way to light that arrow on fire, I'd probably let that work. You know what I mean? Like, okay. stuff stuff that, like, theoretically, like, you know, like, if you guys start flinging magic or, right. like, fire, like, things that would, like, make it more than just, like, you shoot an arrow into a, into a boat. Uh, okay. Okay. Then I will. I I will take my action to just shoot someone on that red ship. Yeah. Someone that's moving around. I will shoot, and as a bonus action, I yell for someone. Bring me a torch. A lit torch, because I'm gonna try and do that next. Uh. Okay. Make a make an attack roll at disadvantage. All right. A fourteen and a ten. Uh. So sixteen to hit. Whew. Uh, sure. Roll. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about damage, right? We're kind of kind of abstracting this. You, you just draw back. You loose an arrow, uh, and like a, a a sailor who's like in the process of like climbing up the the rigging, uh, to try and like there's a bunch of there's a bunch of people like trying to like get ropes around the like badly cracking mast, and as like one of them goes up, you just like pick them off with an arrow, and they like ah! and hits him in the back and they like lose their grip and just fall over the side and splash into the water. Not normally my weapon of choice, but my father did teach me well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like you got a big old Yumi and you just look like a badass yeah, and you're like, just like doing the like, <laughs> aim up a little bit. <laughs> can I, can I use my action to like light, a, I have a tinderbox and torches, can I use my action to light a torch and just hold it out the sure. same way? what i got yeah all righty um, ixis would like to target the biggest baddest individual with a sword that's near the captain of that vessel okay and i'd like to force them to make a wisdom saving throw for me please as all of a sudden you see thyxis's eyes glow red this time as he's not holding his orb is something from deep inside of him is drawing some arcane nature from who he is. And you hear this weird no noise from his throat, which I can't make because my voice is shot. But do you guys do you guys know those throat vocalists from the you know that have that like it, it like, sounds like, like singers? Mm. It's like a yeah, it's like a droning <laughs> noise. You don't you have no idea where it's coming from. Hell yeah. I'm going to cast a spell against that guy. Okay, what are you casting? I am casting a racial spell that I have called Crown of Madness. Crown of Madness. If I remember correctly, Crown of Madness. It, uh, if if it, the target it fails, is a, it is a it is a charm effect. Oh, but on this Good one, call. it does it does not say that if we're in combat, they have advantage. So they are elves, so I believe they automatically have advantage they, racially okay, to charm effects. Elves, they will have advantage. Um, so that's okay. uh, so I, I I did make my reroll there. Uh, what is your spell save? It is a fifteen, and on a. Uh, failure, I believe they have to attack a target of your choice, right? The nearest target? Yeah, I would like him to plunge his sword into the captain's chest. Okay. Uh, everybody on the deck of the Grim's Folly make a perception check. Not Thyxis, because you're already looking at this, <laughs> uh, but the rest of you. 19. 19 plus 3, so 21. 18. Okay, so, so everybody, everybody sees this. Um, you guys see uh from from up in the crow's nest. Uh, 
you like Phyxus, you 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 like plant your your hands on the, the edge of the crow's nest and like look over and grab the you know like kind of scan around and look at the, the deck of uh let's call it the uh we'll call it the hammer of the empire um and your eyes flare red with this infernal uh like blazing energy um tea kettle who's up there with you gives out this sort of like yeah of surprise uh and sort of like whoo, backs away from you for a second um as this sort of caught her off guard um that that like squawk uh alerts the rest of you to like look up and you guys just see Thyxis from above this like raging like reddish like hellfire streaming from both of his eyes um and you like follow his gaze instinctually, and you look to the deck of the uh, the hammer of the empire as uh, the helmsman, who is currently like trying to sort of like steer uh, to avoid a collision with uh, the Pella, who's uh, kind of having trouble uh, maneuvering at the moment as their mass is about to fall off. Um, this helmsman like goes <laughs> rigid for a second. And then you see a very similar red glow flare behind his eyes. And he turns to the captain, who is, like, red-faced, leaning on the, the railing of the stern castle and, like, pointing and yelling directions uh, to, to sailors below. And he... <laughs> draws his saber, comes up behind, and plants a hand, like, on the captain's shoulder from behind, and fully runs him through with his saber. Uh, you see the, like, <laughs> the sword comes out the front of this, this elven captain's chest, and he, like, <clears throat> clutches at it. Uh, before the uh the this possessed uh helmsman just rips it back out. Uh and that is Thyxis's turn. So I'm gonna give them disadvantage on their next initiative roll. Their captain just got stabbed. <laughs> uh <laughs> very good. Okay. Uh anybody else? All right. Just staring in shock at Thanks at this moment. <laughs> uh, in that case, let's roll initiatives for the ships. Khaki uh, player in Spoda Thyxis for being innovative. Cool. Who hasn't rolled a ship initiative yet? Christy, Brittany? Somebody, one of you guys roll. Thank you, chat. Appreciate you. All right. I'll use Naporia die. Oh, I'm sorry. You said it's a minus one? Minus one. Minus one. That's a three. <laughs> Naporia has let us down. Naporia has let us down. <laughs> Naporia wept. Uh, you're actually not last, is the bad what? thing. What? <laughs> you're, no. you're not first. Okay, well, yeah, I'd be worried if I was first. <laughs> you're not last. Okay. Uh, you're actually, not first, you're last. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have inspiration. Can I use inspiration for boat roll? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, not Naporia. No, let's uh, go with Bubbles Die. Okay, that's a so, 12. 12. With a 12, you will go first. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my... Alrighty. My <laughs> Grim's Folly, first to act. Alright, so... We're, are we, we're back in the same boat of, like, literally all everything except for one side of cannons. You have yeah. One, yeah, you have one broadside cannon loaded currently. But everyone's the other ships are starting to get really messed up, you guys. Oh my god! You have done. 
I you have done damage to exactly one of the three enemy yeah. ships. I don't know where you're getting all these other ships. You're getting messed up. But there's <laughs> one getting like stabbed with like infernal throat singing. There's still like twenty dudes <laughs> over there. Like they got the ship covered. How 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 much do you guys really want to keep the sequel? I just don't want the Empire to have it working. Like, what if we? What, what if we have them chase chase us and then just cut it and then have them run into it? I think we should save the sequel. I think we should bring her with us. I'm waiting for Chrissy I don't want to lose her. <laughs> I see the sad face. I see the sad face. I am. I refuse to acknowledge that is sad. I use my inspiration. Captain, where'd you get uh, that map? <laughs> inheriting these maps has been the best thing ever. I've been able to do prop comedy two, se <laughs> two weeks in a row. <laughs> sessions in a row. Well, Man. what? Okay, so what if? What if? What if? And just like okay, so we fine. I guess I won't I be so bloodthirsty. What if we press the advantage, brace and evasive action, and okay. then have advantage for the next one, and then we? I don't know why. Whatever. I mean, if we try running away for one round, it's th like the other, the other, the hammer did no attacks on us in the last round, and they're, you know. Yeah. All right. Then we can run away kind this time. Her. I just want to kill. Ready to run away? I mean, I would we love can... to kill them, but we, we also have to. Up. We're in the middle of the ocean, and I have heavy plate armor on. All right. Okay, I'm, like, I'm we're running. pressing the advantage. Evasive maneuver. Are we re reloading or bracing? Maybe we should just run away. Just That's run just, away? Yeah, maybe we should just run away now that we, like, messed up the red one. We can just be like, tee -hee, bye! Well, running away is the whole... All it's three the whole actions. thing. Yeah. I'm good with either of those sets. Either we do the three separate things or we do run away. But as long as we keep doing run away, like, unless they also start doing run away, like, eventually they won't Right? Like, we'll outrun them? Uh, yeah, yeah, my thought- my exactly. thought is that you don't have to complete two successive, successful runaway attempts. My thought is that, like, you just have to do it twice. So, like, you could do it now, and if you succeed, you can, like, fight a couple more rounds, and then, like, decide, oh, okay, now you're like, let's get the hell okay. out of here and do it yeah, so That's my thought. Rolling. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that idea. We can get the ball roll rolling with Runaway for this round. Oh, okay, but so, Running Away is a contested initiative check? Yes, they yeah. will roll against you. Okay, then I'm going back to my original idea, give ourselves advantage to run away the next time. I'm, I'm back, sorry, I needed, to, I came full yeah. circle. So we can give ourselves the okay. boost. But press just the press advantage. the advantage. We use press the advantage advantage on the contested initiative roll for runaway, or does it have to be for just no? The ship so that basically? that advantage will only for will the ship initiative. For like the round. ship initiative, oh, the the runaway okay. roll would be something different. Okay, never mind. I'm All back right. again to running away. Okay, just run away. Um, like start the running away. This time. Yeah, let's just try mechanical away. question for you, Matt. How does this affect, like, if I'm concentrating on a spell that lasts for an ex extended amount of time, if we run away, will it break concentration from range or distance? Or uh, I like think probably, because I don't want to get, like, mm -hmm. I don't want to get lost in the weeds of, like, mm -hmm. advanced trigonometry of, like, well, you're this far and the, right. uh, <laughs> this, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I think probably, like, if you guys complete the like the double runaway action and end the combat, then your your like concentration. Then it would be out. Would, okay, got it. Point. Yeah. Okay, so I guess a uh, boat initiative. We run away to start the ball rolling. Okay. Could always fight them next round. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, actually, let me let me like let me give you let me give you this information before you do this. Just so that you're making a fully informed decision. You're gonna make a runaway roll. You're gonna yeah. roll your ship's initiative, which is a minus one, against all three of these guys. Oh, so, like, boy. you've got to beat everybody. Oh, maybe it's better Yo. to take one out. Dang. <laughs> maybe okay. It's to take one okay. Out. Okay. Hold on. New plan. New plan. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, bring her around. Fire the last 
set of cannons at the red one so that that one is completely out, like, this at the sails. And then I guess Even we would probably need to take evasive action. Well, uh, all right. Bring her around. Oh. Fire. Evasive action? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the firing is at the red one's sails. And these are your last broadside cannons. Uh, so go ahead, yeah. Somebody, yeah. somebody make that roll for me. Um, I don't know. Lily, Lily, Lily. I'll do it. I'll roll the big boy for cannons. <laughs> big boy for cannons. Wait, let me move my phone out of the way. That was my nickname. In college. Hey, okay, big boy for cannons. <laughs> Um, the big boy did pretty good. That is 17 to hit. That hits. <gasps> okay. okay. <laughs> Roll damage. I don't know where that went. 20. 20 points of damage? Uh-huh. Okay. So. I'm gonna make this ruling on the fly. First time I didn't count this. You give the order to fire the cannons. Poor Dazan repeats the order. Fire! The uh, fuses are lit. <laughs> and one, two, three. <laughs> cannons fire. The first cannonball. The first cannonball rips through, like, the bottom cross brace, cross piece of, like, the sails and the mizzen mast. And, like, hits. So, like, your ballista arrow from before is, like, sticking out of the mast. And the cannonball hits the back of the ballista and, like, <laughs> forces the ballista the rest of the way in. The mizzen mast cracks and begins falling. The second two cannonballs, uh, like tangle, it, it, sort of like as the mast comes down, they kind of get tangled and they end up like dropping a lot faster, and they just sort of like drop center, like amid decks, like right into the top of the ship. So what I'm gonna do is, it only took you four points of damage to destroy the sails. The remaining 16 I'm applying to the hull of that ship. Uh, however, <laughs> the Pella, the ship with the red flag, has had its sails disabled. Their speed is now bagel. They have no speed. They cannot continue in this fight. They are just dead in the water. Your other two were evasive, and you were you fired. You did. We did we bring, did her, bring around, her around, fire, and then bring around, fire, and evasive. Shoot. Perfect. Okay. Uh, the next ship, Pella's out. They're not going to worry about anything. The next ship is going to be the Hammer of the Empire. Oh, actually, hang on. I'm rolling them with disadvantage because their captain got murdered. Uh, well, that's a one. They're going to be last. Uh, so then, uh, Bodie McElf boat is going to be next, uh, and they are going to repeat the uh, same tried and true classic. Uh, reload, bring her around, fire. Uh, 22, I think, is gonna get your, gonna get your AC, even with the, uh, evasive action. Uh, uh yikes. Seven points of damage. <laughs> uh, and maybe, like, one cannonball sort of, like, grazes the, uh, the aft of the ship. Uh, they deal seven points of damage to your hull. Um, okay. Uh, that is... Oh, and then, then we will come to the hammer, who is going to... Uh, I think they're gonna fire, because they, re they, did, they did all their reloads. They didn't shoot last round. They're gonna fire, bring around, fire. And they're gonna try and broadside you twice. 
Uh, and that is gonna be... Oh my god, in heaven, two natural ones! <laughs> I think... I think, like, a few of their cannons, like, fall off the deck of their ship into the water. <laughs> oh no! The hammer of the Empire, why? What happened? Two nat wait, ones? Wait, what? That's the blue one, right? That is the blue ship, yeah. That's why we ignored him! The hammer of the Empire just... Hit itself in the thumb. The, pen <laughs> the Hammer of the Empire is in utter chaos. Their captain got stabbed by their own helmsman. They don't know what's going on. Oh, boy. Uh, like so the they, like... driver of the Empire. They beef it, they beef it on an epic proportion <laughs> this round. Uh, they do not manage to hit you guys at all. Uh, okay. Um, individual actions. Anybody... Uh, so the Pella is disabled. The, uh, the Hammer of the Empire and uh, Bodie McElf boat are still... Uh, Still on your guys' tail. They... Within, like, using ranged stuff. Range. I'm gonna shoot somebody. I light the arrow. Yeah, hell yeah. And and I'm gonna aim for green sus sails. Green sus sails. Uh, yep. uh, very good. Uh, roll to hit. Uh, that is a 17, I believe. Plus six. Yeah, 17 to hit. 17 to hit. Uh, I'm going to aim for somebody reloading a cannon. Okay. Oh, wait. Hang on. Yeah, 17 to, uh, 17 to hit. 17. I didn't roll. Uh, natural 20, assists. making it a 26. Hell yeah. Okay. Very good. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Nimue. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to make you roll damage. Okay. Because, like, the damage that a single arrow to their sails is going to do is negligible. What I no. am going to have you do instead is I'm going to have you roll a percentile dice. Ooh. And I'm going to say on a roll of, let's give it a 25% chance. On a, uh, do you want to do a 1 to a 25 or do you want to do a 75 to 100? What what is your what's your heart tell you? Mm, yeah, let's go high. Okay, so on a seventy-five to a hundred, you ignite their sails. <sighs> no, before you die, please don't let me down. Oh, oh, oh! That's an eighty-two beach. Boom, Nimue, you wait, wait, wait. Pull back the bow. There it is. You pull back the bow, you let fly the arrow as Sela runs over and, like, the, like, passing the Olympic torch, she just, like, uh, fully ignoring the mechanics of, the of like, you definitely have to, like, wrap the arrowhead in something yeah. flammable. Uh, we're not worried about that right now. She definitely <laughs> lights that arrow on fire. <laughs> I didn't get a bucket of, like, tar or whatever. It's a yeah, ship. Yeah, yeah. We have you, it. We, you figured it out. You're pirates. <laughs> like, you got fire arrows on hand if you need them. Uh, you're... Molotov cocktail 20 minutes <laughs> That's ago. That's true, we did invent the Molotov <laughs> cocktail. Uh, you let fly the arrow. It fires, uh, arcs across the distance. Um, it strikes into the sails of... You said you are shooting for green, right? Green. Uh, the sails of Bodie McElf boat. And uh, it doesn't like go all the way through, so the arrow kind of gets stuck, which allows the flame to, over the course of like the next handful of seconds, like heat up and then light and the sails begin to burn um so uh the crew of the uh the green boat are going to have to use some like some of their action they're going to be at disadvantage on their initiative rolls and they're going to have to like spend actions to try and put their sails out or their sails are going to take i'm going to have you roll damage for their sails every round until they manage to extinguish them. Um, let's, uh... So, 15 points of damage. 15 points of damage, okay. Um, we'll say you basically, like, somebody is, like, reloading a cannon, uh, and you just, like, put a crossbow bolt in, like, one of their necks. It's like, and he just bleh, drops dead. Um, so I'm gonna give them a disadvantage on their attack next round. Um, Christy, roll me, uh, roll me 2d6 fire damage against their sails this round. Naporia rolled a six, and my druid rolled a four, so that's ten damage. Ten points of damage. 
the sails begin to burn. Um, all righty. Uh, anything else, anybody? Uh, Thikes is, uh, theoretically, you can have your boy keep stabbing people, right? Yeah, I just want him to go around <laughs> and just stab anybody who's next to him. Okay, so well, the, uh... technically, he gets to make a saving throw again at the end oh, of yeah, each let me of do his that. turns. And the DC is 15 on a we wisdom will... save. You rolled the nat one, so he's super possessed <laughs> still. Um, okay, so, yeah, I think the continue, continue, we continue to have chaos on the deck of the hammer as the captain has been slain, and there is now just, like, the helmsman is just, like, Literally, a man possessed is like like sprinting into the like the the throng of other folks a, 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 aboard the like the poop deck, and is just like <laughs> stabbing indiscriminately. Um, okay, uh, let's roll. Uh, let's roll us initiatives for some boats. Ella is out of the fight. We have advantage, right? Because we did press the advantage. No, we did bring her around and we fired at the sails and evasive action. Evasive. Oh, sorry, I'm in dum dum. Russ, roll a d20. And then subtract one. Seven. I like the very Eight. dramatic, like. Bowling arm <laughs> D20 roll. It's also I have with a very heavy metal die. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. My metal die weighs 17 pounds. <laughs> uh, a 7? Uh, okay. Oh, I gotta roll these guys at disadvantage. Uh, they rolled two 19s, so they go first. Uh, the Hammer of the Empire is first. Uh, and they are going to... I'm gonna give them... I'm only gonna give them two actions to uh sort of because they're pay, embarrassed and pay pay pants. it's more that they are actively trying to quell the revolt of their helmsman who is like running amok aboard their deck with a, with a brandished sword um so i'm only going to give them two actions so they are going to uh actually can't I think they're going to bring her around and they're going to fire, which is going to leave them with no loaded weapons. But they're they're trying to, like, slow you down here. So they're going to take a shot at the Grim's Folly. Uh, oh, no. They've crit you. That's fine. Uh, we have, like, one billion health right now. You are, well, you're about to have one billion minus sixty ten. So. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. <laughs> what are we doing this round? Uh, boy, howdy. You guys take... Yet, so. You guys take 46 points of damage to your hull. Still uh, above half. That's what matters. Still above half. Okay, alright. So we have not run into... Uh, we've not run into uh, sinking and sinking and and crew casualty rate. Um, alrighty. Okay. Uh, that is going to bring us to. Where are we at here? Pella's out of the fight. That was the hammer that just acted, right? They brought around yeah. and they fired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what was your guys' initiative again? Seven. Okay. So Bodie Mc Elf Boat is going to go next, uh, and they're going to do. They're just going to keep doing that same thing. They're going to. For now, they're going to ignore the sails as they haven't taken too much damage. They're going to bring her around, reload, and fire. So, oh my goodness. You've been crit again. Uh, I apologize. 
The Holy Spirit did not activate. The Holy Spirit did not activate. It activated, but it activated on the wrong side of the fight. Um, okay. Uh, only 24 points of damage this time. They did not roll very well. Uh, so 24 additional points of damage. To the hull yeah, chat, the you're right. This makes up for all of their horrible failures. Yeah, somebody did roll two nat ones last time. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, then that is going to bring us to the Grim's Folly. What are you guys doing this round? I believe you have no weapons loaded currently. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we're like fully out. Oh, we have we have the broad the one seven hit points, and we have nothing loaded. Dang, but you know what? Chat gave uh, an add your proficiency bonus, and also didn't specify who it's for. So can we give it to the ship? <laughs> uh, well, does the ship have a proficiency bonus? I don't, I don't think know. It does. <laughs> it should. Um, how about? I'll let... Sh sure, why not? We're playing fast and loose with the rules tonight, huh? You can add somebody's proficiency bonus. Like, whoever makes the roll can add their character's proficiency bonus to something. Guys, what's the vibe? We have one ship down, so now we'd only have to defeat two in a roll to run away. Run away. I think Maybe we have we to try because shot. we have 67 hit points left before we run into problems. Yeah, that's that's like one like crit and another hit. That exactly. We need, that's why I'm that starting. Bad. I'm yeah. gonna fire at the other boat with the fire arrow and hope that that slows them down. We'll get to that after your ship takes its action. Yeah, after. So yeah, I, I think we're gonna try away. running away. Run away. All right, make a uh, make an initiative roll with the ship. You don't have to do very well. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, who's doing it? Brittany? I'll do it. I'm the one who's been wanting to run away the whole dang time. I'll do it. That's a... Add your personal rules. Add your personal rules. Okay, okay, okay. Breathe. Don't, don't, don't. But, also, <laughs> but also minus one. But also minus one. Yeah. Um, where the hell is my proficiency bonus on this dang site? I don't know where anything is on here. It's a three. It's a three, so you Should add... Okay. okay, so 18 minus one, 17. Okay. Well, you, you had to beat a three and a five. So... You begin the you process of away. fleeing. You guys distance the Grim... You, you know, you kind of turn out of the dogfight. You distance the Grim's Folly from the other ships. You begin to, like, gain distance. You're still in, like, cannon range. You guys can kind of, like, shoot at each other. Uh, but you guys, like, wheel the ship around. You pull through, like, a cloud of cannon smoke that's sort of obscuring the area. Um, and you use this to make it, uh, like, a maneuver that kind of, like, puts distance between you. And you guys start to um, move away, trying to put open water between you and your sailing enemies uh, okay uh individual attacks um we'll kind of say that like we can sort of retroactively like you know like nimway wants to take another shot you, you like you can kind of do that as you guys are leaving so like, yeah if, if anybody gonna, wants to attack a ship you can i'm gonna take i'm gonna fire at the blue sails since that that one's not activated yet okay is the shot still at disadvantage yes Okay, uh, 12? 12 is not going to cut it, no, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. No hit. Oh, I get two attacks! Do I get two attacks? Hang on, actually, I'm, I'm also wrong. A 12 does hit the sails. The sails AC is 12. Oh. If I if I get two attacks per action, do I get two hits? Yeah. Alright! Okay, so 12 roll. hits. If 12 hits, uh, roll the hit again. All right, I'm gonna go again for the green. Okay. Still disadvantage. Yes, always disadvantage because you're shooting okay. from one moving ship to another moving ship. All right, makes sense. Ooh, I don't think that's gonna hit. Nine. No, I nine will not hit. So you do hit the blue, the the sails on the the uh, the hammer of the empire. Uh, so go ahead and roll that percentage dice again. Uh, twenty five percent chance. So we'll we'll stick with that high roll, seventy five yeah, to one hundred. And you ignite the sails. Uh, I, mm, I don't think so. I think that's a nineteen. 
Uh, okay, so 19 will modify. Um, but do go ahead and roll me... What did I say? 2d6, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll me 2d6 as the Pellas, or the uh, Bodemic Elf Boat's sails continue to burn. Uh, that's 8. 8. Okay, so they've taken 18 damage to those sails. Alrighty. Uh, any other players doing anything as you guys peel away? Just good vibes. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, but then that will bring us to a new round of ship initiatives. Go ahead and roll them. Who wants to roll? I will do it. Okay. <laughs> 16. 16. Uh, with a 16, you guys win the advantage. Uh, you are the first, uh, the Grim's Folly is the first to act. What would you like to do? We are running away again. You run away again. All right. Oh. So you got to beat. Do it to a Michael. The hammer and Bodie McElf boat in an initiative contest to run away. Uh, they did roll better than they did last time. Believe in you, Michael. Um, Come on, do it for two to us. Roll, roll in one d twenty. D twenty minus one. Minus one. Here we go. <laughs> that's a that's a two. Oh, surprisingly, they didn't both roll a one. <laughs> uh, so no, you guys do not manage to escape. They are they are struggling, but they are still keeping you in in range of uh, of weapons and keeping you in their sight. Uh, so I think at this point, narratively, you guys are too far away for individual characters to do anything at this point, because like, you're running away from them. Um, so, the, uh, the next in the initiative is the, uh, the hammer, uh, their, their sails are not on fire, so they're going to, ooh, they're going to reload, reload, and, uh, line up to give themselves an advantage next round when they take a shot with one of those weapons. Uh, so that's the hammer's play. Bodie McElf boat. Uh, I think they're going to still continue to ignore those sails for now. They are going to... Uh, they're going to keep it up. They're going to brace. Or, sorry, they're going to bring her around. They're going to fire. They're going to reload. So 24 to hit. So they are going to hit you guys. Uh, the Grim's Folly is going to take... Uh, 19 points of bludgeoning damage to the hull. <laughs> Cannons uh, roar through the air. Uh, smash into the, uh, the hull. Like wood goes everywhere. Um... Uh, Anna Cromwell is, uh, you, you guys kind of, like, hear her, like, she comes, like, sprinting across the deck and, like, pfft, skids and runs down below, and she, like, she's, like, point, just, like, points to three people at random. She's like, you, 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 with me, get below. She's like, we got, she's like, we, we got holes, I'm sure, let's go, move it, we gotta patch him. And a bunch of people, like, run down, run down below, preparing to, like, you know, start trying to patch holes to, to keep you guys from taking on water. Um, Can I run down with them? Yeah, sure. I'm starting to panic, so I'm going with them. Okay. So you kind of like run down below with them. Um, Rowan, you see that like below decks is kind of a mess. Like a, like a half dozen cannonballs have like ripped through the, the mid deck of the ship at this point. So like cargo crates are smashed. There's like rations like scattered across the floor. Um, You don't see like you don't see water especially as like at like anna like goes over to the the um stairs like down into the hold towards like the lower portion of the ship just below like where the bilge is um seems like you're not taking on water yet um but there's definitely like you can definitely see like ocean out of some like cannonball holes in a bunch of places in the ship um so she's quickly begins instructing um 
you know, she's like yelling at, at some of the crew members, like they're like grabbing grabbing planks out of your like supplies of woods and like quickly trying to like patch, you know, like maybe just like makeshift patch holes for now until they can like thoroughly replace them later. Um and I believe that is the end of the uh boat initiative. Um so uh let's uh let's begin a new round. Let's roll initiative. In. Roll. Russell, go. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, so with thirteen, you are not going to go first. Uh, Bodie McElf boat is going to go first. Uh, oh, before we begin this round, sorry, Christy, roll 2d6 for me. Their cells are still burning. Eight. Okay, so they've taken 25% damage to their sails. Uh, I don't think it affects their speed yet. Oh, uh, no, actually, they have, uh, they are now going to have a minus two to their initiative. So let me re-roll their, oh, no, I don't have to re-roll. Uh, they're still first. Uh, so they do have a minus two to their initiative now as their sails begin to burn. Uh, I think they are now going to attempt to repair their sails. Uh, so they are going to... Uh, they're going to spend one of their actions to attempt to, like, extinguish the sails, um, and they're going to spend the other two to maneuver and fire. Uh, or to bring her around and fire. Uh, which will leave them with nothing loaded, um, but they're going to take a shot at you. Uh, which I don't think is going to cut it. It's only a 12. Uh, so yeah. you... You see, like, a bunch of shapes, like, kind of climbing up onto the rigging, and there's, like, buckets of water being thrown, and, like, uh, big pieces of, like, canvas are being, like, whapped onto the sail, trying to, like, extinguish them. Um, sort of, like, a cursory, perfunctory, like, <laughs> couple of cannon shots come at you, but they, they didn't really take the time to aim. They've got bigger problems on the deck of the ship. Um, you guys are second in the initiative of the Grimm's Folly. Are we doing it again, y'all? Yeah. Gotta try. Yeah. Yeah. We have to run. We can't take any more hits. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to roll it? I'll, I'll do it if no one else wants to. Do it, Brittany. Yeah. I feel like Michael's dice reward him when he decides to harm people, but when he's trying to <laughs> escape, they're like, no. So it's a d20 minus one. Mm hmm. Okay, so I we got 18 to run. Okay. You. Uh, the, uh, the the order goes out across the ship. Um, you know, full sail! Um, and quickly the, the crew, like, springs to action. They let out all the sail that you guys uh, can. Um, they angle it to catch the wind. Um, and you kind of, like, you feel the ship beneath your feet, like, lurch as it picks up speed. Uh, Bodie McElf boat, uh, you can see them kind of, like, they sort of, like, veer off and begin to, like, give up on the pursuit um, as they attempt to, like, put out their burning sails. Um, the hammer of the Empire kind of, like, wheels broadside and <laughs> takes a takes a shot, like a perfunctory sort of parting shot as you at you guys, um, kind of, like, at your aft as you guys begin to pull away. Um, but you put distance around them, uh, between you and them, and uh, they begin to, like, fall further and further behind. And before too long, uh, you can no longer see each other in the dark. And you have, uh, you have lost your pursuers and exited combat. <laughs> Bye. So, as you guys are out of combat... Initiative is over. Open to you. Uh, like, sis, I think as you sort of, like, come out of the, like, concentrative trance of, of holding this spell, you find Tea Kettle is, like, sitting kind of across from you at the, in the crow's nest, just, like, watching you. Like, is probably just kind of, like, coming out of it, like, just staring at his own hands. Slowly look up at Tea Kettle and be like, What? 
It's not polite to stare. He kind of goes. <laughs> um, how much damage did you guys take to the hall, by the way? There's a lot. We're, we're at 248. Yeah, we're, we're at 248. 248 of 400. Okay. You are not below the... We have to worry about uh, sinking. Okay. Yeah, we took 152. Okay, cool. Alrighty. Um, so you guys are out of uh, out of initiative. Um, what's everybody doing? Probably trying to like. I'm patching whatever, yeah, however I can help. Ship. So the the way that this will work, I'm messing with you guys. Can't even hear this, but I'm messing with the. Uh, I don't have I don't have fine enough control of the volume. It's too loud. I was messing with background music. I'm just gonna turn it off for now. Um, the way that this will work, uh, just to give you guys sort of, uh, information here. Uh, if you look at your the purple column on your your ship spreadsheet, there, the purple box, you have basic supplies. Uh, so that's like wood, nails, canvas, rope, things that you would use to like perform maintenance on the ship. Um, one unit of these like basic supplies will repair 20 points of ship damage to like a part of the ship. Uh, currently in the Grimm's Follies storehouse, you have five units of basic supplies. So you can repair. 100 points of damage that you have taken with that material it'll take time to do that um but like that is how much you can repair uh, so you have essentially you have taken more damage than you have the like the yeah. available supplies to repair so you're gonna have to find port and get more supplies to like fit, conduct full repairs on the ship mm. Um, but you can absolutely start that process. Like, that's no problem. Um, but I, again, I think we're going to, like, abstract that. Like, you know, like, repairs are taking place and you'll, you'll burn these things. Um, in the sort of immediate aftermath of the battle here is you guys, like, you know, escape them and you kind of determine they're not, they're not following you. I think probably at this point, like, you're at that sort of, like, pr gray pre-dawn light. Um, you know, you've kind of like sailed through the night to escape these, these pursuers. Um, what are you guys doing up on, up aboard the ship? You have, you know, all of your crew is here. You also have, um, McCrawl and his, uh, his orcs are with you. Uh, you have the, uh, the, the bookkeeper, um, the, the former head of the, the, uh, Umyath, Umyath Dorian, I guess, uh, or Dinam Libri Enclave. Um, she is she is here with you. Um, her name is Aora Vesta. Where did she want us to drop her off again? Uh, I don't know. We haven't asked her that yet. It was mostly <laughs> like, hey, let's get out of the city before we all get murdered. Sort of, yeah. sort of the extent of the conversation you've had with her. We probably like spend like the next day just like frantically doing all these repairs until we've yeah. used up all of our repair kits stuff <laughs> yeah. like and then we'll talk to her and we're like yeah i would probably just go ask captain like which port should we at least head in the direction of while we're repairing so we have like a general idea which direction we're going probably do we have a preference one. Well, Glasgow, we know they're friendly to us. Yeah, you're about a you're about Glazo, a ten day sail yeah. from Glasgow. Emporia's a little closer. Um, yeah, we could drop off the sea. Oh, I don't want to leave. Oh yeah, we got we got to go to Emporia. We have the body. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we have the body. We got to mm -hmm. go to Emporia. Okay. Go so you guys Neporia. want to set we'll set a heading head for Emporia? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. We'll so. I think we'll sort of like 
we'll kind of hand wave the next like maybe two days of your travel as you guys are just like repairing things making sure the boat is like safe you've set a heading for naporia um so a couple of days have passed since you have like fled the the imperial attack here you disabled one ship you escaped two others um, and you have these this group of individuals on board as well as the body of this lunar warrior that you recovered from Serengran. Um and i think probably at this point like a few days past i think um mokral and um aora vesta probably like flag one of you down and are like hey we don't really we don't understand like you guys have a captain but like it doesn't seem like he's the only one in charge we don't know who's like making decisions here but we would like to like we need to you know we, we don't know what is going on can we like have a conversation about what is happening i mean i think mo crawl would probably go to nimue because she speaks work and Probably, I think, like, sort of what happens, I think, is that they sort of, like, they kind of, like, talk to each other a little bit. Seems like Aora Vesta has enough orcish that she, like, manages to kind of talk to him. And so they, maybe, we'll say we'll say they come to Nimue. Like, they come to Nimue together. Um, and just, like, in common, Aora Vesta says, um, It has been um, two days since we have... Uh, fled the Imperial uh, Navy. Um, it seems that the ship is no longer in danger of uh, sinking or any of the nature. Um, would it be possible to discuss the, uh, uh, the plan going forward? Um, we are... Uh, I am, I can speak only for myself. I am very grateful that uh, you rescued me from uh, the dungeons of Sarangra. I am sure that I would have not survived, but... I do not know what it is that is your plans going forward. And I am hoping that uh, perhaps I can come to understand this. Yes, there is things that are very important for me, uh, places that I must be information that they have, uh, you understand? Um, and Macrawl just sort of like lets her ramble and is just occasionally like, hmm. Mm. Uh... Nimue would let them know, at the very least, first, we are heading for port to Naporia for uh, resupply and safe passage, and as well as we have um, family to return to the homeland. Um, but after that, we will definitely address where you need to go. But in the meantime, I can arrange for a meeting with the captain and the rest of my party, and we will... We will discuss going forward. We still have a few days out from Naporia, so we can do that before we get there. She kind of sort of nods. She she looks to um, McCrawl, and you kind of in sort of like a little bit stilted orcish. You know, she she says like, uh, is this? Uh, it takes her a minute to like find the words. Is this uh, of honor to you, uh, chieftain? Um, and he sort of like wishes, uh, Nimue, you like speak fluent work as we've established, mm -hmm. right? Like, yep. Um, he's uh, he like gently corrects her, um, uh, with like the correct orcish word that like, um, instead of like it, like, is this uh, is this bearing of honor he corrects her to like uh is this uh, like like agreeable to uh like to your desires he sort of like corrects her to the, the correct terminology um and uh he says to you Nimue, he says the long tooth tribe have a debt to pay to you, warrior Nimue, and the crew of this vessel. But it is not a debt 
that surpasses our duty to our tribe. We will accompany you to this Naporia you speak of without complaint. But I hope that we may return to our own path with all haste afterwards. That's agreeable. I just need to see honor to our fallen. Yeah, yeah, nah, this is... I understand this. Yes. Thank you, Mokro. I will he, come to you when I get an uh, appointment with the captain. He nods and just goes, like, back to his... Whatever he's doing. Um, make a perception check, Nimoy. Come on, Naporia. Be nice. Oh, it's not the worst. Oh, nope. hello? Russell's internet just shitted. Oh, oh no. Uh, let's see. 13. I'm playing Fikes now. <laughs> uh, 13? Yeah. Um... You notice McCrawl had <laughs> Sila. You notice McCrawl um, heads down below decks, yeah. and there is kind of you see like a quick sort of flash of movement from behind one of the uh, sort of like behind like a, a set of crates, like kind of near the the, the stairwell that leads below deck um um you take note of uh Kyrgyzgra kind of like she's like you didn't notice her before she's like kind of hiding hiding out like behind a barrels and stuff but as like McCrawl goes back below you see her like kind of like slip out from where she was and follow him down below decks um, you get the impression that she's like she's been doing this to you a lot so you sort of like yeah. recognize it like kind of like hiding off behind and just like watching um, it seems that she has like currently has a fascination with with the the uh, the long tooth tribe um, bulls and especially their leader. All right. Um, I'm not going to interfere, but I am going to give McCrawl the heads up telepathically. He's used to this by now. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a little follower behind you. Just, uh, in your in your follower. like <laughs> in your mind, he says, "Yes, the fish girl follows me." I think she's just fascinated with you that's all should be fine just you'll be fine <laughs> Since until she proves otherwise i consider her harmless all right end of conversation <laughs> i cut off <laughs> like you got it hangs up um okay um is there any other like conversations anybody's looking to have well i uh, was gonna go to the captain but as the captain is the in captain the has moment, has and not answering his door so <laughs> not at the moment he ate some weird I, rations i oh. go one of the nights when there's not many people around i go find him away okay and like i assume since it's nighttime she's on the deck of the ship yeah, but, like know. probably hasn't started her routine yet but I, I just kind of like go stand next to her awkwardly. I don't say anything for a minute. I'm just standing there. Are um, you okay? No, actually. What's wrong? I know it kind of worked out in theory and we're all still alive. Mm hmm. In theory. I never, ever want to do anything like that again. Where I have to act like that. And I have to put my friend in danger like that ever again. What? I sold you. And I throw the money at her. 
I just dumped the gold at her. It's 150, I believe, was the gold. Rowan. I... I have done everything I can to not act like that my entire life. And while it got us some answers and we have a member of your country to return and we're alive and we got the orcs out, I, I can't do that again. You don't have to. I will never make you do that if that is against everything you feel is right in your body. But you were bringing her home. Without this money, without being sold into it, I never would have known she was there. None of us would have known she was there. She would have disappeared from our stories. From our legends. Her name lives on now because of us. Because we made the hard choice. The gross choice. That I would do it again in a heartbeat, Rowan. I will do it a million times more if I get even one more back. I guess that's fair. That's my burden, I... not yours. I didn't join the order to just get away from home. I joined to do better in this world, and the first chance I had, and I knew it would work, and I hated that I knew it would work, I turned into my mother. And I haven't slept right, and I'm exhausted, and I was terrified that something was going to happen to you. Can we never... Next time we sell me, next time we sell Scylla, we... <laughs> One of us that can handle it. None of the men. The men need to stay where they are. I mean, we could sell the men. I'm just saying. Not Thyxis. <laughs> yeah, Thyxis wouldn't stand a chance. Makes me worried. I just... I needed you to know that I was worried and that... I just give you a big hug. I'm just like, squeeze you a little bit and kind of rub your brain. <laughs> Rowan's doing everything she can to not cry. And... Hugs him way back and just go, and it goes quiet. You are a good person. You perform well because you know your mother, as you say. But that was not you. I know that's not you. You didn't have me fooled for a second. I I knew I didn't have you fooled, and I'm kind of glad I didn't have that horrible man fooled either, since he figured out we weren't who we said we were. But if anything had happened to you, despite what anyone would have said, it would have been my actions that put you there. If we hadn't gotten you back, that would have been on me. And I would have had to come back to Naporio with you instead of Akiko. I know. But we cannot dwell on what could have happened, what could have been, what should have been. We cannot. That is not how we survive. We have to be here and now. We did good. We succeeded. I call that a win. I look at one of the parts of the ship deck that's still damaged. That wasn't like a, like an aesthetic thing, it's not so much like a... You know, I just go. I'm just surprised Captain didn't yell the entire time that they were blowing holes in his ship. Well, we now have slave money to repair it. Hey, that's true. kidding. I'm kidding. It was supposed to be a joke. I is mean, it? Uh, maybe too soon. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's let's use that money to fix the ship and maybe get Mokral and Aor where they need to go. Absolutely. Rowan and Nimue. Uh, make me a perception check, please. Aporia diets go! Hey! 22. 15, which is pretty good for me. 19 plus 3. Rowan, you do not notice this. Nimue. 
Yes, sir. For the second time today. Oh, no. You notice someone departing after eavesdropping on one of your conversations. As you conclude this conversation with Rowan, speaking about the the necessity of, of, of doing what had been done in Umyoth Durai and um, and sort of pontificating on your allegiance to one another and, and doing what needed to be done and, and snatching this victory from this otherwise questionable series of choices mm -hmm. you see sort of the like the flick of a of a braid and like the heel of a of boot uh, disappear down um, and head below deck and Nimue I, you recognize Kenna was watching and listening to this conversation between you and Rowan. And she has sort of, as you guys come to the conclusion of it, she darts away and disappears to somewhere else on the ship. And as you kind of spot this and, and, and take this information in, um, we will call an end to tonight's session. So, okay. sans murder beard. Here, I'll play. I can play like this now because everybody's camera in the wrong place. Uh, but sans murder beard, I want to thank you guys all for, uh, as always, playing with me tonight um, oh, yeah. on tonight's episode of Dope Requisite. Um, we'll be back next Tuesday for the Grimm's, nope, the Fool's Errand who are uh, about to try and thwart a plot against the king of uh, Mithlin Day. Uh, and uh, then we'll be back in two weeks for the, uh, the next chapter as the, the, uh, the crew of the, the Grimm's Folly proceeds on their, uh, on their journey to see where they, will, uh, where they will go next and where kind of uh, fate is taking them. I see Sila making making a gesture, um, and in fact, yes. Um, congratulations, crew of the Grim's Folly. You have leveled up. Hey. Level yes. six. Uh, so, uh, with the successful completion of the Umiath Dorai arc, um, you guys have attained level six in our story. Um, you can apply that before next session. And uh, other than that, I want to bid you guys uh, a, uh, a good night. Thank our viewers for, uh, for joining us. Um, you guys, as always, um, as my players. Um, so we will uh, we'll pick up uh, next time with the Fool's Errant. Um, and as always, we will see you next Tuesday. Bye, Bye.